respected chairperson. Uh, I will be talking about the home monitoring. And uh, my topic is that whether it is really a new normal in these days. And uh, before that, uh, two, two, three slides regarding the hypertension. And I would like to emphasize that uh, hypertension is more common. In my country, around 39% prevalence rate of hypertension. But it is not so attended by the physicians. And still, we have a lot of hypertensives who are not receiving any treatment. And we have to make more emphasis on the diagnosis of hypertension. That is why I, I have chosen this topic. And you know that all vascular diseases, which we uh, say because of the hypertension, ranging from heart failure to peripheral vascular disease, large number of diseases are attributed to hypertension. If we talk about heart failure, burden in India is very high, but 50% of the hypertensive develop hypertension, this uh, heart failure. So such is the importance is still hypertension is not gaining that much importance because of certain reasons and challenges to hypertension management are many. <clears throat> if we talk about public perception, uh, this particular uh, slide, which I'm taken from the Canadian Journal of Cardiology, this says that 80% of the people were unaware of the association between hypertension and cardiovascular disease. This, they think that hypertension is not very common and uh, not very dangerous and it is just a disease and we can take a pill and everything will become normal. And 63% believed that hypertension was not a serious condition. And 38% of people thought they could control high blood pressure without the help of any health professional. And they don't think that it requires a continuous monitoring. When the monitoring comes in our mind, the this statement of the Norman Kaplan is very, very important. Uh, the measurement of blood pressure is a clinical procedure of greatest importance. But that clinical procedure, which is of greatest importance, is being performed in a very, very sloppiest manner. And hardly anybody thinks on that. One famous study, um, I don't remember the quote, uh, was done by the uh, Mehendi Hassan. He was an anatomist. And he did that study in which he found that uh, I'm talking about 20 years back when the only mercury manometer was there. He found that around 43% MD doctors and 39% MBBS doctors and 32% nurses were not able to uh, measure blood pressure correctly. And it was delighting to see that the nurses were more accurate than the MD doctors because they were not having that importance to the measurement of blood pressure. So we have the cardiologist, nephrologist, and plenty of uh, specialists who can talk that which drug to be given and what combination to be given and what combinations not to be given. But about the measurement, nobody talks. So recording can be done direct methods, which are only for experimental purpose. They, do, they are not required and they are not used in the clinical setting. Indirect one is used, and we know that indirect methods are the sphygmomanometry. And we know classically we are taught palpatory one, auscultatory one, and but most important, the oscillatory one, which is not being regularly taught in most of the medical schools. And the manual versus, oscillate, uh, manual versus automated instrument is another issue. And most of the time, perceived is thing is that manuals are more correct, but it is opposite. The automated one are more having more accuracy. <clears throat> the, when we talk about this, Recording, there can be office recording, home recording, or the ambulatory blood pressure monitor. Types of reading. When we, when we take blood pressure or middle blood pressure, there can be a casual blood pressure measurement in which a measurement taken without the required five minute rest period, then it is called casual. And this casual blood pressure measurement cannot be taken as a uh, for the diagnosis purpose. Resting blood pressure is the seated resting blood pressure used to determine and monitor treatment decisions and also the making diagnosis. The standing blood pressure is used to test for postural hypotension, which may modify treatment at present. And we had a very good lecture in the morning session on pastoral hypotension and importance of that particular disease. So which blood pressure to be chosen, office, home, or ambulatory? This is the question. 
regarding office measurement it will remain it is there and it will remain but only statement is that office measurement alone may not suffice we sometime we have to use the home monitoring and the ambulatory one if the required only office measurement may not be correct most of the time so why because circadian rhythm of blood pressure blood pressure is not same it keeps on changing uh, and according to the 24 hour rhythm we can have the tipping pattern and those who have dipping of 10 to 15 mm of mercury during night time they are said to be dippers and those who do not have dipper tipping pattern they are called as non dippers why we want to know dippers and non dippers just because the dippers are having more risk of developing cardiovascular disease while the non dippers in the comparison of non dippers not only that we can have reverse dippers during night time the blood pressure rises in the cases of dkd and ckd we can found all these changes which are attributed to autonomic dysfunction and we can have an extreme dippers during night time blood pressure fall is more and all of these conditions are not good then coming to the oscillometric method which i was talking about the oscillometric method is a better one why because in the oscillometric devices the uh, um, blood pressure measurement is done by and here the mean arterial pressure is detected not the systolic and diastolic and then we can find out systolic and diastolic which is opposite to the methodology of the palpatory and auscultatory one where we can uh, find out the uh, systolic and diastolic and then we can calculate the mean arterial pressure we all know that the mean arterial pressure is a major uh, parameter which is required in oscillatory method these are the oscillations which decide and the oscillations are recorded and by that we can find out the um, blood pressure so patient preparation is the first thing it has to be done whether we are talking about oscillometric or any other method these things are the requirement and they have to be done without them if the blood pressure is taken this will not be a correct one and that is the major problem we are facing because most of the time our patient even when they are using home monitoring they phone us that my blood pressure has gone up to this level and then we have to educate them that no you have to measure your blood pressure only in the morning hours and in the evening hours not any time and especially when you are having some problem that is not the correct time to measure blood pressure because at that time the blood pressure will be different and you cannot say that it is the same blood pressure which you are talking about so the posture is very important the posture patient sitting calmly seated for 5 minutes which is very very difficult in most of the office setting it becomes very difficult because usually the physicians do not have that much time so that they can allow the patient to sit calmly for 5 minutes it does not mean that patient is waiting outside your chamber that is not correct because at that time he is not calm he is aware and he is waiting and he is trying very hard to get early into the, your chamber and you know that sometimes he used so many ways to enter your to your chamber and the second thing is that patient has to sit on a seat which has a backrest and back well supported which is not the case most of the time what happens that doctor is sitting on the chair and patient is sitting on the stool and on the stool there is no backrest so it is not possible that the situation most of the time arms should be relaxed and supported at heart level and legs uncrossed uncrossed legs and feet flat on the floor that is another important thing and not only that the bladder and bowel have to be evacuated before measuring the blood pressure these are the requirements whether we are using the other methods are using the monitor the office technique i have already talked about two readings have to be taken and if the readings are different by more than 5 mm of mercury the reading should be repeated until two consecutive readings are comparable that is very very important and standing blood pressure uh, at 1 to 3 minutes at zero hour and then one minute and three minutes to diagnose postural hypertension of which we had a lecture in the morning hours and at that time i again want to repeat that postural hypertension can only be recorded by office measurement we don't have any other method by the abpm we cannot record the postural method the postural hypertension 
So the why I'm talking about more about home monitoring because by home monitoring alone, we will be able to find out true hypertensives and also we have to be able to find out the white coat hypertension and the mask hypertension. Mask hypertension is not rare. It is very common. We are not diagnosing the mask hypertension. That is the problem we are facing. And why? Because most of the time uh, we overlook the, the problem of the mask hypertension. And we have seen that the prognosis of mask hypertension, prevalence of mask hypertension is approximately 10% in the general population. 10% quite high, almost similar to the, and the prevalence rate of diabetes. So it is again higher in diabetic individuals. So those who are practicing diabetes, they must look for the, uh, the mask hypertension. Then uh, we know that the home monitoring and the office blood pressure monitoring and the ambulatory monitoring, they all have different values. And the description is that for the blood pressure monitoring of a home method, 135.85 is the uh, limit. And then the daytime average am ambulatory blood pressure should be 135.85. And 24 hour average of ambulatory blood pressure should be 130. These are the norms when they're using ABPM and the home monitoring rather than going for the office measurement. Patient instructions are very important. All methods, they should be there using a validated monitor that is very much required. Most of the time monitors are plenty, but they are not validated one. And in, you know that in my country, there was no um, agency available which can monitor that whether the monitors which are being used are of the good quality or validated one. But now the government has passed one rule that no monitor can be sold without having that particular uh, validation. Correct cup size is second thing which is very, very important because usually the physicians have only one cup size with them. We have to ask our patient that please come with your cup size because every size of patients are coming to you and it's impossible a physician to have different cup size. And uh, a, a correct resting technique which I have already talked about and patient technique should be reviewed regularly. Duplicate measurements and the seven days after any treatment change, when the treatment change has been done, then definitely we have to go for the home monitoring and ask our patient to monitor their blood pressure morning and evening day, daily for at least seven days to find out whether the treatment change has been effective or requires more modification. And I said in the beginning, the two readings are required in the early in the morning, just after 30 minutes, within 30 minutes after getting up, but the bladder has to be emptied, bladder bowel both have to be emptied and before taking any drug and before taking anything in meal. And similarly, two hours after dinner, before half an hour before going for the bed, the best time to monitor blood pressure. By that, you will be able to find out the difference in the daytime and nighttime blood pressure. And then even home monitoring will be as good as the ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. What are the benefits of automated devices? They are better than the uh, devices which we are using earlier because of so many things. They are in these BP readings from one operator to the next operator because in the uh, previous one, uh, we, whether we are using LED one or the mercury one, the operator, they were operator dependent. If the operator is different, then different readings are there. Uh, that removes many of the errors which are associated with the manual readings. They are accurate, reliable, and reproducible readings, multiple readings with averaging, and opportunistic screening can be done by using them because there's no effort involved and you can use the machinery and they have been checked for several readings. Automatically zeros with each inflation, which we have to do a lot of exercise when we're using the mercury one or LED one, then we have to press it and evacuate and we're very sure that whether it has been zeroed or not. And they also perform full system check, which is important. But the only thing is that we have to use a validated blood pressure measurement device. And for that, the, <clears throat> the validated one, we have certain guidelines and the good guidelines, which I have found is the BHS guideline, British Hypertension Society guideline, which is good to guide us that what monitor should be used. <clears throat> Support is required and measurements taken by patient at home are often lower than readings taken in the office and closer to the average blood pressure recorded by 24 hour ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. So home monitoring readings are almost close to the ambulatory one. 
<clears throat> and when the uh, in the Gallup poll in 2005, it was found that 35% of hypertensive patients were now checked as their pressure active pulse per week. And this thing has improved in my country as well. And uh, latest one survey was done in the whole Asia. And I was also part of that survey that has revealed that during these two, three years, a lot of doctors are inclined using the monitors and even patients are buying them. But I think they should buy, every patient should buy like a thermometer, like a glucometer, they should have a blood pressure monitor at their home. The office BP measurement is associated with several disadvantages which I have already talked about and large variability in office BP reading have been reported both in clinical trials and in the primary care settings. So that is why it is preferred to use the home monitoring one. A study in which repeated BP measurement were made over a two week period under research study condition found variation of as much as 30 millimeter of mercury in the no treatment test. So that is why they are not reliable when we require home monitor. This is the accuracy of home blood pressure monitors in the measurement of systolic blood pressure. And you see a very good accuracy there and readings are almost similar, only few readings were apart. Advantages and limitation of home blood pressure monitoring. Advantages are so many, like can take multiple readings over an extended period of time and effortless readings recorded. Avoid white coat reaction to the BP measurement, reproducible physics, CV morbidity and mortality better than RFS1. And most of the readings say, and most of the research also points out to that, allows patient to better understanding of the hypertension management. Even patient knows that the blood pressure requires drug and the patient's compliance also improves and the BP variability can also be done daytime and nighttime measurement. Limitations are also there. Some devices have been found to be inaccurate and in my country, the 70% of devices used by the patients are inaccurate. And cuff placement can affect accuracy, may induce anxiety and excessive monitoring, which is the case. And we physicians receive so many calls, sir, my blood pressure has gone up to this, this, this. And that is one problem we are facing that when they have monitor, then they have only one job, monitor it every one hour. That has to be discouraged and we have to educate them that only two readings are required, one in the morning, one in the evening, not at any time. And when you are feeling a lot of problems, anxiety, depression, or any other physical problem, please don't monitor your blood pressure. Lack of nocturnal recording is there, but up to some extent it can be done and these are some limitations to the home monitor. So potential indications are for the use of ambulatory, where the ambulatory one is required, or uh, the list is exhaustive, but some of them can, uh, can use the home monitoring as well. Value of home blood pressure monitoring is uh, very high, and we, I am putting some data. Five prospective studies have compared home and office BP for predicting cardiovascular outcome. And all five found that home BP is significant predictor and four out of five found that it's stronger than office BP. So more data in favor of home monitoring rather than office one. Other studies have shown that home BP predicts target organ damage better than the office one. And patients who monitor their home BP may be more likely to take their medication regularly because they are not in that dilemma that whether the we should take drug or not because they're monitoring blood pressure themselves. So the compliance increases. Recommendations are plenty of recommendation. Most of the guidelines and most of the, uh, the advocacies are done, including National Institute for Clinical Excellence guideline, uh, NICE guidelines. Uh, they also favor it. For EBP recording, two consecutive measurements are taken. All these things are in the NICE guidelines. They also favor home monitoring. European Society of Hypertension Working Group on Blood Pressure Monitoring has produced a detailed consensus document in 2010, published in Journal, Human, Journal of Human Hypertension, and it recommends semi-automated, non-automated one. So I will finish very quickly. Uh, so a lot of advantages of using home monitoring, and especially in these population, we can use the home monitoring. Thank you. I think uh, I will say in the last that uh, today, uh, the time has come that the home monitoring become new normal for nowadays. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you, sir.